George Frederick Handel was born just 50 miles away from Bach in the same year, 1685. And when we give the dates for the end of the Baroque period, we use the date 1750. 1750 is the year that Bach died. And although Handel was not to die until nine years later in 1759, Handel was rather ill his last years of his life and wrote very little music. And so choosing 1750 becomes a good choice. Handel moved to England later in his life and began to write oratorios. And this is an interesting thing because oratorios really were not common until Handel began to write them. He wrote them because the Archbishop of London decreed that during the time of Lent, people were not allowed to have uh, certain kinds of music oratorios being based on biblical texts and not being staged were really the only difference between them and opera. They weren't staged, but they still had a chorus and orchestra and soloists. And so Handel began to write English language oratorios somewhat late in his life when he was at the height of his powers. In 1741, he wrote Messiah. And I've visited the Handel House in London and sat in the room in which Handel wrote that piece. It's a small room, about 10 by 12, no windows. And Handel famously locked himself in that room and didn't come out until the Messiah was finished, a period of just a matter of days. We know that Handel was probably manic. And on one funny level, we're grateful that we didn't have modern medicine in those days. Because if we did, he probably would have been taking something for his illness. And perhaps we wouldn't have what's considered quite arguably the greatest choral work ever written. What makes it so great? Well, Handel has put together these musical ideas that actually go throughout the entire work and in a wonderful way tie it together. In addition, each of the 50 movements of the, of the piece stand on their own magnificently well. Because they stand by themselves well, sometimes people don't realize these common, wonderful threads that hold it together. So let's look at some of those threads, because for me, when I perform Messiah, when I lead a concert, it's one of the things that I have in mind to perform it in a way to bring that out. The piece starts with the, with the orchestra playing in this style. That style, where the first note is quite long, followed by a very short note, ba, 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 is called the French overture style. It's a style that was associated with King Luli and therefore with royalty. So Bach and Handel both start many of their pieces that have to do with God using that style. The style says this has to do with royalty. In Handel's case in the Messiah, he's saying, the Messiah was a royal Messiah. What kind of royal Messiah? A godly Messiah. Right after he has that opening overture, we have the first piece, and it's for a tenor soloist. It sounds like this. This figure, followed by this one, and this one, is the second major figure delivered to us in Messiah. What is that, this repeating note? This repeating note is a comforting figure. And in fact, the text is, comfort ye. And it's a figure like a loving parent comforting by tapping gently on the back of a, of a baby, perhaps, who needs to be settled down to go to sleep. This idea of comfort. So Handel 
puts it in the music. And it, what's interesting to me is, you may not re- have realized that until it was pointed out to you. Once you have it pointed out, you can't miss it. And once you realize it there, you realize what a lovely thing that is in the music. That's called a recitative, Comfort Ye My People. And that's followed then by the first aria. And in the beginning with this first aria, we have one of the many, 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 many wonderful, fascinating examples of word painting. Handel loved to use word painting in his music. Word painting is when the music sounds exactly like what the, what the piece means. So, so um, and he couples that with what's called the doctrine of affections. Today, if, if you see a friend, they might say, how you feeling? Or what's your mood? But in those earlier times, in the 17th and 18th centuries, people talked about somebody's affect. And so... Baroque composers believe that certain musical figures could make you change your affect. So Handel writes in this opening piece, shall be exalted. What is it about that? There's an exuberance the way it keeps going up, but how about the fact that it goes... It keeps jumping forward to the next thing as it goes up the scale. There's an exuberant quality to that that brings out a wonderful kind of meaning in the word exalted. And then there's some these obvious word painting things where the music just sounds like the... So, and every mountain and hill made low. And hill... Drops down for the word low, and so on and so forth. So within the music, you have all these little um, ideas where the music very lovingly and very effectively matches with what the text is.